So many of these risk factors are actually related. Is there anything more related to depression and anxiety than insomnia? Strong relation there. Systolic blood pressure being too high. We've done videos on a thing called AGE, not number of years, but advanced glycation end products. That's how I actually personally slipped into chronic disease. You know, the chronic diseases are high blood pressure, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, plaque, and they're all very much related. For many of us, myself included, high blood pressure was the first tip off. You know, once you begin to start looking at it, diabetes itself does appear to be very much related to and probably a cause of high blood pressure associated with age, advanced glycation end products. Now, what does that mean? Well, there's an advanced glycation end product that we've all heard of. It's called hemoglobin A1C. We all know what we know what most of us know what hemoglobin is. It's what's in the red blood cells and any protein like hemoglobin, if your blood sugar is too high, that glucose will start binding, what we call covalent binding, a permanent bond to that protein. So it's like plasticizing protein. What does all that have to do? Well, those AGEs, those plasticized proteins can get into the filter mechanism and the control mechanisms of the kidneys, decrease the flow through the kidney and the kidney says, wait a minute, I'm not getting enough flow through the filters. Let's increase our pressure a little bit so we can get that flow. That is a major unrecognized cause of high blood pressure. Smoking initiation. I'm not going to say any more about smoking other than that's the next one, lifetime smoking. So they looked at those both as separate risk factors. Caffeine consumption. Now you may say, whoa, doc, you've talked multiple times about maybe caffeine being healthy. Here's the thing. Yes. And you see a lot of stuff on caffeine and it goes back and forth. Sometimes it's a problem. Sometimes it's healthy. One of the things I would say is I personally think that caffeine may actually be associated back with our friends here, insomnia. Because look down here, other risk factors, short sleep, daytime napping, caffeine consumption, all of those very, very much associated with loss of sleep. So we're planning to do, you know, if we can get some time away from the prevention projects here in Alabama, hopefully we will be able to add some more programs on not only stress, but sleep. Other discussions about different risk factors. And guess what? If you're looking for risk factors, you can also look for protective factors. When you see this kind of image in a scientific study, usually you can assume where you see this line, that line is the point of differentiation. This is called a whisker plot, a type of whisker plot. But basically what this shows is the dot in the middle is where they actually found the results of that particular study. But either end is where they found the potential statistical boundaries, you know, two standard deviations. So let's look at a couple of these. This is what was found to be protective. These over on this left-hand side, and these were risk factors. So again, systolic blood pressure was found to be clearly a risk factor, whether you went throughout the whole area. Statistically, it's clearly a risk factor. Coffee consumption, remember we mentioned that before and talked about how cloudy that is. And you can see that here in this analysis. Yes, even though it was on this side, statistically, coffee consumption could actually have been over here, depending on what you saw. Now let's go down here and talk about the protective factors birth weight as a baby. I've mentioned this many, many times. Back when I was born 64 years ago, we used to think of a fat baby was a happy, healthy baby. And what we found out is no, that's not the case. Over, what is it, eight and a half pounds. Every ounce over that, you have greatly increased risk of having prediabetes and diabetes when you get older. It's called epigenetics. We can get into epigenetics at some point if, if somebody wants to discuss that. We've discussed it several times. Having a lower childhood BMI was protective. Testosterone was protective. HDL was protective. So a lot of interesting stuff. You look over on this side, ed- years of education, testosterone levels, older age at menarche. So a lot of interesting stuff came out of this Mendy randomization study. I'm going to repeat though, no question, hands down to me, one of the most interesting is loss of sleep as a major 
risk factor. So let me run through the conclusions quickly. Comprehensively assessed causal associations, huge numbers, type 2 diabetes. Remember, most diabetes is actually unrecognized, undiagnosed. So you get a lot of clouding on the statistics on that. Some risk factors might be missed due to a scope review, and we won't go into that. We've already talked about why that would be the issue. There's a risk of overlooking associations. Again, some more statistical and epidemiological science junk we'll just ignore for right now. The instrumental strength was low. Again, more epidemiology, statistical issues. But the findings should inform the public health policies for primary prevention. In other words, what that means is we need to start thinking about sleep. Get that book. I don't have any financial link to that, by the way. I do have some links to that Respirate that I did mention. If you buy it from my channel on my website, prevention strategies should be constructed from multiple perspectives, such as lowering obesity. And again, don't think that you're not obese if your BMI is between 25 and 30. Look at your levels of weight. Tim Russer wasn't at 30 or more. Smoking rates, big, big deal. Improving mental health. And as we said, the big mystery, the big one that nobody talks about was sleep quality. If this is not the first time sleep has been seen as a risk factor for diabetes, but again, it's so important. That's why we presented this one for today. As we mentioned, education level and birth weight, a couple of very interesting perspectives on protection or risk factors for diabetes.